It is very hard to tell people who think they're saved that they may not be saved. That's a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, I mean, really, it's the same conundrum you face when Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons come knocking on your door, as they do very often, right? Is that they come convinced they've got the truth. Um, one of the brilliant things about Canada now is the whole world is moving to Canada, especially to Toronto. About 51, 52% of the people who live in Toronto now were born in a different country. Very few of them believe they're Christians. So it's just wide open. Not only that, but the longtime Canadians there have completely, utterly rejected the gospel. So it's so easy. I, I spoke to my friend's class. He goes to a, a government school, a public school. Not, I don't think a single one of those kids had ever really heard about Jesus or the Bible before. In some ways that makes it easier, right? Because you don't have to undo all this bad stuff. You don't have to try and undo all the promises of the prosperity gospel and say why. No, God doesn't promise us that. He, he promises something better. So I think it's very, very difficult to, to draw people back who are already really immersed in, in false Christianity. But I think what I've seen successful, and I really think that's part of this, this reformed resurgence that's been going on around the world, is just honestly, the true gospel does in the end have far, far better answers. So the prosperity gospel will always collapse. It has serves the one or two people at the, at the very top of the heap, and everybody else doesn't get to see it to the same degree. Everybody else has all these failures. And even people who are at the, the top of the heap in the prosperity gospel, they get older every day. They don't look as good as they used to. They get sick and they die. So that gospel always falls apart. Any kind of legalistic gospel, any kind of antinomian gospel, like all of them eventually collapse. It's only the true gospel that survives. So, I mean, there is a place to address error. And sometimes we can do that with friends or family members. But honestly, I think just the joy of the gospel, being free about that, being free about what Christ has done for you, what Christ means for you. At the end of the day, I think that's really what stands out to people, the joy of the Lord. No other gospel offers that to us. So if we're living consistently as people who have come to Christ in repentance and faith, people who are in our Bibles, people who are just marveling day after day at what Christ has done for us, I really think that's the testimony that, that survives anything else.